In this video, we look at the Poisson distribution, which is part of the AI HL only course in topic four, statistics and probability. Now, AI HL students cover four types of distributions. We have probability distribution, binomial distribution, normal distribution, and now the fourth, Poisson distribution. Okay, so let's get into the theory. And then as we go through key concept two and three, we'll work them through with a simple example here. And then you'll start to understand what this distribution is all about and the types of questions that you'll encounter in an IB Math AI exam. Okay, so a Poisson distribution describes the number of events occurring in a fixed interval. Now interval could be time. So for, for example, it could be number of events per hour or per day. But it could also be other units of measurement. It could be an area, like a square kilometer, or it could be, say, a volume, like a liter of water. So this interval here describes some sort of unit. It's most often time, but it can be other types of units. Now, for a Poisson distribution, we assume that the rate of occurrence of these events are constant. And I'll talk about what these events mean in the context of this uh, example here. A key number in a Poisson distribution is this lambda symbol here, and that's the expected number of events in the time interval. And this Poisson distribution is a discrete distribution, which means that the possible values are whole numbers from zero up to infinity. So let's, let's give some meaning about these points here, and I'll go to this example, and then we'll solve these as we go through key concepts two and three. So in this example here, a, car's, a car salesman sells three cars on average per day. So our interval of time here is per day, and the number of events is how many cars the salesman sells. Now we assume that the rate of occurrence is constant, so every additional day, the average is three. And even within that day, if we took half a day, we could say that the average cars the, cars, the car salesman sells is 1.5. So throughout the time interval, the rate of occurrence is constant. That's a very important assumption for the Poisson distribution. Now the lambda in our example here, the expected number is three. So on average, this car salesman sells three cars in the interval, average per day. And it's a discrete distribution. The car salesman can't sell decimals of cars. They can't sell 1.5. They can't sell negative cars. So all the possible outcomes are from zero. And then theoretically, but unrealistically in real life, infinity cars as well. So the car salesman could have a great day and sell 100, could have an extraordinary day and sell 1,000, but they're in whole numbers, either from zero all the way up to, theoretically, infinity. So when you start a Poisson distribution question, it's important to define two things. First is your discrete random variable, which we give capital X. Usually it's some sort of capital letter, and the most common one is X. And in this case here, our discrete random variable, so the, the, thing, the thing that varies is the number of cars that the salesman sells, and it's discrete, so the whole number. So our capital X here is number of cars sold, and this is per day. Let's just add that, just to be clear. And our lambda, our expected result, our average, is three. Okay, now that we have defined those things, you'll encounter two types of questions. And they are the probability of a specific number of events in the interval. So for example, part A, what is the probability that this salesman sells exactly five cars? Or you'll, uh, you'll be asked for a probability of a range of events. So for example, in part B, the probability that the salesman sells less than two cars or in part C, the probability that the salesman sells more than three cars. Notice here that these are ranges as opposed to part A, which is a specific number. Now for specific numbers, we're going to use the Poisson PDF command in our calculator. And for a range, we use the Poisson CDF command in our calculator. So let's go ahead and answer these three questions. And then I'll also touch on what that actually looks like from a visual perspective using this Poisson distribution uh, graph here in the center. This has a lambda of three as opposed to the left one which has a lambda of one and the right one which has a lambda of 10, just as three examples of what they look like. Okay, so part A asks to find the probability that this salesman sells exactly five cars. And we can find that by going menu, probability, distributions, and we go all the way down. We have our two Poisson commands here, right down the bottom. And the first one is Poisson PDF. Click that. Our lambda, it asks us for what is the expected number. 
that is three, and our X value is, what are you looking for? In this case is five, hit enter, and that's our probability there, 0.101, rounded to three significant figures. Now, what does this number here mean? This is a probability, 0.101, so 10.1%. That is the probability that this salesman sells exactly five cars, given that his average per day is three. Now, just to visualize that, if I go down to this center here, that this center Poisson distribution here, if I go across to five on the horizontal axis, these are all the possible results. And if I look at the height of this bar here, and I'll just shade this bar in, the corresponding vertical axis value, which is the probability, is 0.1. So the heights of these bars gives us the probability of that uh, number occurring. Okay, part B is the probability of this salesman selling less than two cars. So in other words, zero or one. Now we can probably look at that visually and get a good estimate. Zero and one are the heights of these two bars and then we can add them together. So this looks like it's roughly 0.15 and this one looks like it's roughly 0.05. Added together will be about 0.2. So we're expecting that type of probability. So you can see here that we can actually look at it at the uh, Poisson distribution graph here and get an idea for the uh, probabilities. But let's go ahead and find this using the uh, Poisson CDF command on our calculator. So we go menu, probability, distributions, right down to Poisson CDF. Again, our lambda is three. This time it asks us for the boundary. So the lower boundary is zero. That's the least amount of cars. The upper boundary will be one because we're looking at less than two cars. Hit okay and we get 0.199. And finally, part C, what is the probability that this salesman sells more than three cars? Well, visualizing what this is here on our, on our Poisson distribution graph with a lambda of three, that will be the combined heights of all the bars greater than three. So it'll be this one here, the four, five, six, seven, eight. And you can see here when our expected number is three, by the time we get to about seven or eight, the probabilities get very, 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 very small, which is why theoretically it can go to infinity. But when your lambda is small, any sort of score uh, or any sort of um, the value above, say, 8 starts to get almost negligible. As opposed to when a lambda was 10 and the probabilities are clustered about that expected number, then you do get decent probabilities up at sort of 16, 20, but it depends on the lambda number here. But the answer to part C is the sum of the heights of 4 and above. Now, the TI Inspire calculator does allow you to do that, and I'll just demonstrate that now. We can go menu, probability, distributions, right down to Poisson CDF, and we can have a lander of three, a lower boundary of four, and an upper boundary. I recommend just putting in a very large number. I can't enter infinity, the calculator doesn't allow me to do that, but in comparison to a lander of three, a value of say 100 is a very large number, and you can see here it's almost negligible in terms of the probability. That actually represents the car salesman selling 100 cars in a day, which you'd think, you know, probably, uh, you know, it probably takes an hour to sell uh, an individual car to an individual customer. So this is a very large number in comparison to the Lambda. Hit OK, and we get that probability there. Some calculators don't, don't uh, have the functionality for an upper range. So in that case there, we would we'd actually need to do the complement of this and do one subtract the probability of three or less. So menu, probability, distributions, down to Poisson CDF, and go zero to three. And it gets the same result. It's just a complement because all the probabilities need to add up to one. So two different ways to approach it depending on the functionality of your calculator. Okay, that was an introduction and overview into the Poisson distribution. These questions do get harder, so I recommend going across to the question bank section and practicing some of these questions.